Hey, I want to give an encouraging word to anyone who might be going through a season of life or maybe you've even had moments in your life where it seems like your emotions won't line up with the truth of God's word. And um, maybe if that darkness feels super real, more real than the truth, um, all you need is to turn on the light. God is light and God, God even describes him as in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when you spend time in God's word, when you are reading God's word, you're reading the, um, how do I put it? You're reading the, you're reading Jesus in manifested word form and his word is life and health to all of your flesh and it pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints and mirror. I know I, I'm like a broken record, I say that all the time, but his word has power and I find that when I listen to the truth, God's word says the truth makes you free. So wherever the truth goes, it brings freedom to any area of bondage in your life. And um, I know the devil is always trying to make us believe lies or things that don't line up with God's word, like God's word pronounces you healed. So if you're not healed, that's a lie. That is not the truth. The truth will set you free. And I just want you to know that maybe if you don't feel healed or if you don't feel happy or joyful, the truth is the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace. And that fruit is on the inside of you. And God's word even says, I'm really thankful because today, I was really struggling and my pastor actually, he mentioned this verse about how we have the power of God on the inside of us. So the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside you. God's word says in Romans chapter eight, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So you're pronounced righteous through, through Jesus Christ and therefore the spirit is inside you and he will never leave you. You are right with God and he gives you life because he's there's a verse that talks about, um, I'm getting sidetracked, but there's a verse that talks about um, justification leading to life. So as in the same way Adam sin, I'm going to paraphrase, but in the same way Adam's sin brought death, result, uh, brought condemnation resulting in death, Jesus' work on the cross brought justification, which leads to life. So you are justified. There is no sin that God will impute to you. He will not count your sins against you. He will not count your shortcomings against you. He will not even count your doubts against you. Or your feelings he's not going to judge you and um, I don't know if maybe you've had days where you just can't seem to believe God's promises like your faith is I, I personally have days where sometimes I feel like my faith is so weak and I don't know what to pray to God in those times like how do I pray when my faith is weak I don't want bad things to happen I don't want to get too caught up in my emotions or too discouraged well the truth makes you free all you need in the darkness is just to turn on the light um, and faith comes by hearing so this is a hearing of God's word coming to you to lift you up. God's word lifts you up. Um, yeah, the spirit is life because of righteousness. You are right with God. And even if maybe your emotions don't feel right, this one truth that you are right with God, when it permeates you, I don't even have to say that. Like, I don't want, I don't want you to think that your emotions relies on how able you are to believe. All you need to do is hear the truth and the truth will make you free. So when you hear the truth, your emotions will follow the truth. Your emotions will, will line up. So maybe if you feel like your faith is too weak to um, proclaim out of faith or um, maybe you just have, have had days where maybe you don't even want to uh, proclaim by faith. Maybe you don't even have the strength to open up God's word. The truth will make you free. Faith comes by hearing and Jesus is there. He's lifting you up and he's not putting pressure on you to try to figure it all out. He is not like that. He's gentle and lowly in heart. He even said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, you'll find rest for your souls. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. So you're not coming to a system or a list of rules or do's and don'ts when you come to Jesus, you're coming to him. He's a person who is gentle and lowly and he is not demanding of you. He's not, um, He's not harsh or demanding or cruel or unsympathetic. Like God's word says that we don't have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses, but he was in all points tempted as we are, except without sin. And God's word even says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, of unmerited favor, undeserved favor, that we may find help, that we may find mercy and help in our time of need. And personally, my time of need is all the time. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> But um, he's always there to help you. He's always there to lift you up. And he's not going to give you a stone if you ask for bread. And God gave me this revelation about this word early on, just because, you know, when you think of Old Testament and New Testament, um, 
stones in the Bible refer to the law because the law was written on tablets of stone. And the law is all about human performance and doing and don'ting, doing and don'ting. Like do this, you'll get good, do bad, you'll get bad. God's not going to give you a list of things to do when you ask him for bread. And Jesus describes bread as healing. He says the healing is the children's bread. It belongs to you simply because you are God's child. You do not have to earn it or work hard enough to receive it. So if you ask God for healing, he's not going to give you a list of things to do. He's not going to say, hey, sorry, you can't be healed because you didn't do this or you didn't do that. Like He will give you healing. He was not withholding healing from you. Your healing took place as soon as he died on the cross. He took upon himself all your disease, all your pain, all your disease, all your suffering, all of it he bore on the cross. And I'll put every verse in the description so you can read along, but this is the truth and the truth will make you free. So I know that sometimes it's hard to, it's hard when you can't see it. That verse that talks about how we walk by faith and not by sight, it can be hard sometimes, I know. But if you need that faith, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, and faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. And God's word says, how should they hear without a preacher? So I'm not saying I'm a preacher, I'm saying I'm just one who is giving you the words so that you may feed on it. And sometimes it's kind of good to hear it from someone else's mouth because um, I, I quote the word to myself all the time, and sometimes even after quoting the word to myself all the time, it, just to hear it from someone else, it makes my faith grow even more. and just gives me more confidence that, hey, if I'm not the only person who can believe God's word, maybe if they can believe God's word and receive from him, maybe I can too. And there's a verse that talks about how they, overcome, they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So testimonies have power. If, you have been, if you've been healed by God or impacted in some way, share it. It's, it's powerful. Like I've had moments in my life whenever I, like there's even a verse that talks about how I will remember your works of old and I will muse the works of your hands. And that's an antidote to discouragement. If you remember what God did in your life before, you'll, you'll be reminded that he's faithful to do it again. And so there are so many moments where it felt like I didn't have the power to make God's word happen in my life, but he showed up anyway. And even when I was faithless, he is still faithful. So God's not going to let you go if you don't feel him close. He's not going to let you go if your emotions don't line up with the truth. He's going to love you and feed you. Like if you think of Elijah, I recommend if you're feeling depressed, take a nap, eat some food. That's what Elijah did. He, he ran into the wilderness and God's word says that he was a man of like passions as we are. Um, he was a man of like passions. He had the same human nature as us. And he, he literally called down fire from heaven one day and the next day he was fleeing out of fear. And he actually asked God, he said, God, let me die. And I've had moments of like that where I'm just like, God, I'm ready to, for you to just take me home. Like I'm ready. And God actually had Elijah eat some food and take a nap. So taking a nap does wonders. <laughs> but that, that's, just like a, that's just like something you can do. But the point is, God's not going to leave you in the dust. He's not going to leave you in a state of discouragement. He's going to give you rest. He's going to feed you whether it be with his word or just his love, or just a reminder that you are right with him. He's not judging you. He's not demanding of you. So we have not come to the mountain that um, is touched with fire and smoke. We've come to Zion, the mountain of grace. And um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I want you to know that if you're going through like a, a valley season or like a dark season, or if you want to know how to, um, in, when those moments come, or if those moments have come, how to walk in more joy, all you need is more rest and you do not need to do more to make God's joy flow in your life. You do not need to perform more or try to be more holy for God to love you more and to show him you more of his grace. He's already showing it all to you. He's already making all grace abound toward you. So maybe if you don't feel it, God's faith comes by hearing. So his word is there for you to lift you up and encourage you. It's food. So with that, I guess I'll just let you look at the sunset for a little bit. <laughs> So that's a pretty view. Kind of get the gravestone out of the way. <laughs> that's pretty. But yeah, he hears. Um, one more thing. Because the devil will try to make you believe a lie. And he'll try to convince you that the lie is true. And the more you believe a lie, the more you're going to speak it. And uh, I find that in moments where I'm discouraged and... I don't know what to say or sometimes sometimes I just need to hear something good. I just need to hear 
something that will make hope arise in my heart. And God's word says that faith is the proof of what you hope for. So um, your faith is the proof that what you hope for will happen. So and, um, I'm trying to think of anything more I can add just to kind of give you hope. Hope does not disappoint you. So if you've been going through a season where you're just, you're looking to God for more hope, like he gives you hope. Hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through his spirit whom he's given us. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going on and on. But yeah, God loves you. God loves you. And he sees you as flawless. Even if you feel like your faith is small, his faith is great. And he has all the faith that you could ever need. So that's pretty much it. Jesus loves you.